Some a uh, little bit of breaking news. What? Uh, someone just mentioned, hey, we could port Blinka to that scope. There's no, there's no hardware there. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, not a bad idea. All right, so let's uh, let's kick it off. Ready? Okay. What's first? All right. Uh, well, we have previously uh, had RGB NeoPixels, like these ultra high power three watt RGB NeoPixels. Um, and uh, some people are like, hey, can you get ones with RGBW? And I was like, yeah. And these, look at this beautiful video with like the starburst. Yeah. Um, so we ones, have yeah. two versions, one with warm and one with cool white. So it's actually four separate elements in the LEDs. Let's look at a close-up of the LED. So you can see like it's RGB and W. There's four elements inside. Um, and so you get like true white instead of like color mixed white, which for some people like they really want that clean um, look of a warm white or cool white. So yeah, thanks. So you get, um, I mean, you can see the four, four diamonds there. Um, oh, each one is one watt. Um, it uses the NeoPixel protocol, um, but because it is four watts, you need a very big five volt power supply. Just be aware when you're using the, these that each one of them uh, can be using up to like an amp or so, half an amp. So um, each one comes on a chain. Uh, we solder with wires. Of course, you can remove them and solder anything you like. Um, there's an aluminum backed PCB, but if you're going to turn these on really bright, you might need more heat sinking. Just, just be aware. This is, did I mention this is four watts? It's four watts. That's a lot of yeah. brightness. It's a blinding. Um, yeah. So this is, uh, just so you, I mean, like, it's very you can bright. even see them reflecting off me and this is bright in here, but yeah. check this out. Like, yeah, it's super bright. In fact, it's so bright. I think I, I overheated a little bit. Hold yeah. on. Let me, uh, let me do a thing. Hold on. I'm doing a thing. I'm doing a thing. Do a thing and then this. There you go. Okay. Uh, so this is the one with the warm white. So yeah, I mean these are just like these are very, very, very bright. Yeah, these are bright. Um, and uh, but what's nice is they're just neopixels. They've got some mounting holes on them, uh, and they're pretty easy to use. And this is the aluminum backed PCB. So uh, don't forget if you're going to use them with a microcontroller or microcomputer, you can use them with uh, Raspberry Pi and stuff because we've got neopixel support there. Um, but make sure it has NeoPixel support and make sure that it has RGBW support because it's got that fourth byte for the white data. Okay, next up, a very adorable click, click, mini solenoid. Click, click, this is so click. cute. It's, this this deserves to have its own Pixar movie. Yeah. This solenoids. Is a, it's a little solenoid. I mean, <laughs> it's a lock solenoid. Um, you know, I think yeah. folks, uh, they like our larger lock solenoid. This is cool. You can make a little diary that opens up, yeah. like with a microcontroller. Okay. This is cool. So let's go to the overhead. So this is it. Uh, so it's normally open, and then when you power it, it this opens up. So because most of the time it's not going to be powered, most of the time it's going to be locking whatever it's keeping you from opening. And then to open it, you know, uh, this pulls in. So um, this will be you know the clearance you've got. You've got a couple millimeters of clearance. Uh, this is a 12 volt solenoid, so you have to give it. 9, 10, 11, 12 volts, draws about like 300 to 400 milliamps uh, when it's powered. Unlike the larger solenoid that we have, um, this part is not rotatable. Like the other one, you could actually open it up and rotate this. This is actually kind of like hard, it, it, like it's it's bolted in in a way that you cannot change it. So uh, not a big deal because most people want it in this orientation, um, but uh, that's that. There's some mounting holes, uh, but it's just a tiny little lock solenoid. Great for making uh, electronically controlled locks. I like that you could get the tiny hot plate and then this little tiny, tiny lock. this tiny lock, and then you can watch Timothy uh, Chamelay, is that the name? Yeah. Uh, tiny horse. Okay. Okay. Uh, this is, um, this is kind of interesting. So this is a NR52840 um, dongle from Raytac. And this is not something that you can plug into your computer to give it Bluetooth low energy. Like it doesn't have a native operating system kind of driver to it. Instead, think of it as like a very small microcontroller dev board that is easy to plug into a computer. Because yeah. inside- It's a Trinky. <laughs> it's kind of like a Trinky. It's um, a BLE Trinky. Yeah, this did not- And I don't have to make a Trinky character for it because this is what it is. Yeah, so let's go to the overhead and I'll show the- I wonder uh, what I would make it. Maybe a beluga whale. Beluga. Okay. So um, this is, okay. So uh, I just opened this up. So inside, um, there's the NRF52840 module, um, and you can see it's soldered in here. There's a couple of components. And then on the back, there's a single button and a single LED, and that's it. Like, there's no other hardware to connect to. 
So what would it be useful for? Well, I think that there are still some situations where you want a standalone Bluetooth microcontroller that you can just plug into USB or you could power from a USB power pack. Um, for example, I think this could be a USB beacon that, yeah. you know, standalone. It's easy to program. You plug it in, you program it with Arduino or CircuitPython, and now it's standalone. Um, I think if there's some situations where you want to communicate with a Bluetooth device, but you don't want to have the native um, operating system involved, um, there could be some situations where you can't, you know, it's Windows 7 maybe, um, or it's a lockdown and you can't install Bluetooth support, um, but you could connect over USB serial and you could send data back and forth. Uh, you could turn this into like some sort of like a Bluetooth automation tool. Wow. I don't know exactly what it's, it's perfect for, but I think it's interesting. Um, it uh, comes like this particular one, even though it's the same part number as the generic version from Nordic, um, we have... We have this come with the Teeny UF2 bootloader. Uh, so just be aware, if you buy this and it's not from Adafruit, it won't have the bootloader, it won't work. Um, we specifically have the bootloader on it. When you press the button, plug it in, the bootloader comes up so you can install CircuitPython or Arduino code on it. Uh, and that's wow. not true of the generic module, which comes blank. I like that you could just pop this on like a big USB battery bank and it'll just be a beacon forever. Yeah, like, it could, it could uh, do, uh, there's, I'm sure there's something that somebody will find useful for this. Next up, did, if you finish all your dinner, you get your pudding. Yeah, so these are pudding keycaps. It's like an add-on kit. Um, so um, you get, I think, like 15 different keycaps. It's not like the alphanumeric keys. It's kind of like the number pad keys, um, all the extra keys. I thought this would be useful because some people like the look of them, but they don't want the full keycap set. Now, here's the thing about them. As you can see, they do not have the same profile. Um, they're designed for a keyboard that has like a curved profile, and so you'll see like there's R4 and R1 and R2 yeah. profiles. And so when you're putting this on your um, macro pad, just keep in mind that like you kind of want to keep all the same profile one on the same row. Uh, it'll look and feel best that way. And if you don't, you can kind of get an, an uneven um, uh, keyboard like profile. So you can show on the overhead. Um, here you can see, I'll, maybe I'll turn this off so you can see it clearly. So you see these are tilted and these all have the same tilt, but these have a different tilt. And if you mix and match um, different tilts, it'll look weird. So like in this case, I kind of try to um, kind of match them up. I still think it's useful. I still think there's a lot of combinations that'll look good. It's just one of those things, like I tried to find these, uh, you know, glow through uh, pudding style keycaps, um, but without the profile tilt and that wasn't possible like this is this is kind of what's available this is all you can get um and i still think they're kind of neat i think there's you know there's a lot of times that you want the word pause or arrow keys or shift or control or function or, or any of the other uh keycaps that it comes with um maybe you're willing to put up with the fact that it isn't uh, a perfectly flat dsa or xda profile i still think it's of some use it's just something to watch out for you can't yeah. mix and match every combination and have it you know look great Okay, and uh, the star of the show tonight, lady, besides you, our community, our team, and our customers, we have two uh, breakouts. Yep, two RTC breakouts. These are kind of the same. We haven't have breakouts for these RTCs before, but these are now the STEMA QT versions. Um, so we've got two. We've got this, which is the DS3231, which is a high-precision, temperature-compensated crystal uh, real-time clock. This is kind of like the, the finest of the fine. This is like the truffle of RTCs. See, this is how we tie it together. High quality RTC over I squared C. And on the back, there's a coin battery holder. And then if you're like, well, you know, I don't want that. I'm okay with truffle oil, which doesn't actually contain truffles. Yeah. The PCF8523, uh, I think this is a perfectly fine real-time clock. Great for data logging. Uh, maybe not for clocks, you know, just because it will lose a few seconds a second or two a day compared to the DS3231. But for many purposes, the, the PCF is, is perfectly fine. Um, also has the coin battery holder on the back, plug it in over I squared C. Um, now coming with uh, STEM QT connectors, it just makes it really easy to plug and play these into an existing uh, system because it uses our yeah. um, I squared C connection. You can do this. You can yeah, do this. you can do either one. And you know, it's, it's, you can pick and choose, right? You can yeah. start with one and then decide you want higher precision or lower, um, switch over to the PCF, of course, we have Arduino and CircuitPython code for both of these because they're just STEM QT versions of our existing breakout. Uh, these are kind of my two favorite RTCs. You got the uh, high quality and the uh, budget quality. Both are very budget, good. Budget, high quality. That's it. That's new, That's products. new products.